Today, we become legends. Hey, my name's Simsa. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're back with another inventive tier list idea. This time, we're going to be ranking all the items that have been removed from Smite in its entire history since 2012. Of course, the game has changed a lot in its, like, what, eight or nine years that it's been out at this point. Many items have been removed, many items have been reworked or just changed. This one's only going to cover the items that were completely removed. Any, like, item reworks or anything, that could potentially be another video and they won't be included in this one. And yeah, I'm basically going to be ranking these from S to F based on their power level at the time they were removed. Obviously, I'm not basing them on how they would be in today's meta. You know, some of these, like, really old items might be absolutely terrible in today's meta, but uh, in the meta they were in, they were actually decent. So as, as best I can, I'm going to place them based on the meta when they were removed. Some of these items were removed before I even started playing the game. I started playing in uh, early 2014, like January 2014. So anything removed before then I haven't actually played with, but I can generally see how it would have worked and I have a, a decent understanding of what the meta was like back then. I have done my research. And so yeah, without further ado, let's just get started. So we're going to place Ankh of the Golem first. There was two Ankh items uh, previously in the game. This first Ankh right here came with 25 protections, uh, physical protections, 350 health, 15% attack speed for 2100 gold, but 1% of your maximum health was converted to physical power. This is a really interesting effect that used to be on Runeforged Hammer before it was uh, completely reworked. You got a um, percentage of your physical protections from Runeforged Hammer as power. This one was based on your health, so arguably stronger in a way. A lot more characters can build it. I think this item would have been quite strong for the base stats when the, when the meta was right for it. You know, assuming you're building it on a tank that has like 3000 HP, you're getting extra 30 power from that. So the item's really coming with 30 power, 25 protections, 350 health, 50% attack speed for 2100 gold. That's a fairly solid item. I think I'll only put it in the B tier though, because I highly doubt it was breaking the game. It was just maybe built on some like soul and tanks and things like that. The other one, Ankh of the Reborn, was the more defensive version of the item tree, so you basically buy an Ankh, you would upgrade it, and you would go into either of these two based on your preference. This one came with more physical protections and more health, 50 and 450 respectively. An extremely similar price tag, only 35 gold more for this one, and the passive is your HP 5 is doubled for 10 seconds when you're hit by a basic attack, which can only occur every 60 seconds. So this one, to me, I just... Regen in Smite, I think, is highly overrated. It is a solid stat, but it's not something that you, like, want to be buying an item specifically for, you know? It's often, like, Regen will come as a secondary stat on an item you already want. And to be honest, this passive just seems a bit useless. I'm going to put it in C tier still because the base stats on the item are just really good for the cost. 50 physical protection and 450 health for 2100 gold must have been really good back then. So I'm still going to give it a C tier placement, even though the passive is ultimately pretty useless. Uh, we have Assassin's Blessing. So I'm going to be including all the old blessings that got removed because they were technically removed, but I'm not going to be including the old starter items because we have those back now. And uh, not only were they not fully removed, they were also very similar to current starter item first stages we have right now. So ranking them would be a little bit boring. In my opinion, it would just be like ranking the current starter items in a way. But yeah, Assassin's Blessing, you know, I think it's a solid A tier. It wasn't breaking the game, but it was obviously the jungle item. You couldn't jungle without it. It was pretty strong. You know, it, it healed you. It, it got you everything you needed to do to do your jungling early game and things like that. Solid item, but not breaking the game. Attacker's Blessing, however, you could argue should be S tier. Um, I think I'll put it in A again for now, uh, but mostly based on its removal date because I know it did get nerfed pretty pretty severely before uh, blessings got removed but like release attacker's blessing probably should be S here uh, it was by far the best non-conquest blessing for those that don't play non-conquest game modes there was attacker's blessing defender's blessing and specialist blessing for attack defense and utility basically and those were all the available in non-conquest modes. Attacker's Blessing was by far the best one because the way you evolved it was just dealing damage to people and it came with like power and pen, which was just really good for any offensive character. Uh, Silver Fox Girdle, a very interesting one. I think it's either D or F tier. I think I'll leave it in D for now. Basically, this item just gave 750 health and nothing else. It was purely an item that just, if you want to stack up an absolute shitload of health, maybe you buy it with Ankh of the Golem down here. They were in the game at a similar time. You know, maybe you buy both those two and then, you know, this, this 750 health you're getting from Silver Fox Girdle is being converted to an extra, like, 7.5 power. It's not terrible, but ultimately, an item that offers just health and literally nothing else isn't generally going to be that good. At least Stone of Gaia in the current game offers, like, a unique passive and some regen as well as, like, a ton of health. Speaking of a ton of health, we have Gauntlet of Thebes, the very old version. So Gauntlet of Thebes to me just seems like a solid item. I wouldn't say it was probably breaking the game back then, but maybe with synergy with other things like the Silver Fox Girdle and the Ankh of the Golem, because Gauntlet of Thebes back in the day was a health synergy item. It cost 1850 gold, which is incredibly cheap for a tier 3. That's usually the price you'll pay for like a good tier 2 item, so very strong. Uh, it came with 600 health and nothing else, but before you roast me saying that I didn't like Silver Fox Girdle for the same reason, this one has a passive effect that increases your maximum health from bonuses from other items and everything, including base health, all by 15%. So basically, when you buy this item, any other health you buy or any health you get scaling from levels is always going to be better, and you're going to end up with like over 4,000 health easily by the end of the game with this item. And so I think with certain synergies, it could have been very strong, and just honestly, as a base item, it's not that terrible, so I put it in A tier. 
Uh, Matt's Tome was basically Book of Thoth. They reworked it uh, and removed this one. So I basically put this one in like B tier, I guess, because Book of Thoth uh, back in the day was a pretty solid item. You know, stacking was more popular back in older Smite than it is nowadays. It was often that like most mages would stack. So uh, Book of Thoth was probably pretty solid back then. Boots of Celerity, I'll just rate these based on Talaria boots because they were a very similar thing. Uh, these were a little better than Talaria boots though because they gave, I think, 22% movement speed out of uh, in combat and 35% movement speed out of combat, which was pretty pretty damn strong. But they were basically Talaria boots. Uh, original Boomer's Mask that cost 500 gold. This, there should be a tier higher for it, really. This item was absolutely ridiculous uh, at his time when it was 500 gold. Basically, the way they designed masks at a certain point in Smite's history when Boomer's was around before it got reworked into the Boomer's we have down here, which we'll also talk about. Starter items cost 800 gold and masks cost 500 and obviously that's 1300 of your 1500 starting gold so you had 200 gold left to buy potions so you could go a mask, a starter item and four potions and that was just like basically the best start ever you know you weren't really going boots or a tier one item at this point you were just going double mask. So obviously junglers built Bumba's mask, but you had mid laners building it to solo mid camps and back camps when the jungler's not around. You had solo laners building it to solo their blue and maybe back camps if the jungler's not around. It was just an absolutely ridiculous item. You even occasionally had supports doing it as like a double jungle strat. It, it really was breaking the game at the time, which is why I think it deserves an S tier placement. S is really like the, the items that were completely dominating the meta, you know, forcing the game to work a certain way. And that Boomba's mask definitely did that. The other Boomba's Mask, however, I guess I'll just give a B tier. It was okay, but mostly it was removed because it was problematic for the game, having that much movement speed, you know. This really only saw play on a few very specific niche gods like Morrigan and stuff like that. Ultimately, it wasn't that strong, but on the gods that it did work on, like Morrigan, it, it was pretty solid item, so I'll give it a B tier. Defender's Blessing gets an F. Uh, this was by far the, like, actually, was it the worst? Specialist Blessing is also terrible, but uh, this was not a good starter item. If you were ever going to go any of the non-conquest blessings, you just go the Attacker's Blessing, even on, like, uh, tanks. Defender's Blessing really just wasn't it, to be completely honest. It was very hard to level up and didn't give great stats. Uh, we have Ratatoska's original Emerald Acorn before he got reworked into where he had a single Acorn and then reworked again to where he has the multiple Acorns again. I know it's a bit confusing, but this is his very original Acorns that we're talking about here, not the ones he has now. Uh, for the Emerald Acorn, I think B tier is a solid placement. Emerald Acorn definitely didn't break the game, but it did make Rat Solo somewhat viable on its own, which is definitely worthy of like a fairly high placement on the list. Uh, we have a second Emerald Acorn. I'm not sure why. I'll just drop that to the bottom. Here's an interesting one. So this item is called Circlet of Focus, and it came with a mechanic called Focus that increased your CC durations. Basically, for every 10 Focus you had, your CCs lasted 10% longer, and 50 Focus was maximum, similar to like Flat Pen, for example. And then if you had maximum focus, all your CCs would last 50% longer. Basically, this mechanic was incredibly unfun. You know, no one wants to be hit by your mere freeze and be frozen for four seconds because all tanks would just build maximum focus in their builds and hit one CC and people just died if they didn't have beads. Granted, beads was on a lower cooldown back then and stuff, but still, th this mechanic was just absolutely broken. I think maybe it deserves an S tier, honestly. Uh, not for this item specifically. Uh, Circle of Focus is more so a representation of, of the focus mechanic as a whole because it was on a bunch of different items. This item in particular came with 300 health, uh, 15 of each regen, and 30 focus, so 30% increased uh, durations, but also using ability gave you 10 focus for 5 seconds with a max of 2 stacks. So in theory, you could get maximum focus from this one item and increase your CC durations by 50%. But it was also on a ton of other common items. It was a bit like cooldown reduction at the time. It was just slapped onto a bunch of items that you would normally buy. So like, I think Jotun's Wrath had focus, Divine Ruin had focus, Kronos Pendant had focus, like a bunch of other random items that you were buying back in the day just had it. And so it was a really core cool mechanic in the game, but it was honestly, it broke the game, which is why I have it in S tier for this circle of focus. It, it, it's, it's the icon for the focus mechanic. Uh, we have Frostbound Amulet. So this is basically the reverse of Frostbound Hammer. This used to be how Frostbound Hammer worked. So basically where Frostbound Hammer now, you hit basic attacks and slow people. This one is the physical equivalent, but you hit abilities and slow people. So it's like a physical gem of isolation, basically. This one was less strong than Frostbound Hammer. I'll drop it in C tier, basically because hitting abilities to confirm uh, like uh, slow is a lot harder than just like continually basic attacking someone as like a warrior for example so it was generally less bought than uh, frostbound hammer is today and then we have gem of isolation which once again reverted in the worked in the reverse way i'm not sure why they did it like this but gem of isolation you needed to land basic attacks and it was a magical item uh, which kind of made no sense i guess it was tied into the fact that all basic attacks were physical in uh original smite because that was probably when this original item was around but just in general, it doesn't make much sense for a mage to be trying to basic attack people to slow them. It makes much more sense for the mages to be using the abilities and the, like, warriors and stuff to be using uh, basic attacks, which is how it works now. 
So I'm going to put both these items in C tier. They realistically could have been lower, though. I'm not sure exactly how strong they were. Uh, Golden Bow, though, goes straight to S. This one, obviously, I'm sure a lot of you know that it broke the game. Uh, basically, it was dormant for a long time. No one really used it. And then they gave it some major buffs, uh, especially to Throwing Dagger, the tier 2, which you could start in your starting build and still have the AoE wave clear effect that Golden Bow gave, which is what it did, by the way. Basically, your basic attack's hitting an AoE, kind of like a, yeah, every basic attack is a Mercury one. And so every hunter cleared the wave insanely fast without having to use any mana or abilities. So they could sustain in lane forever. They had tons of kill potential because their abilities were always up. They had infinite wave clear, so they were getting tons of farm. It just made hunters absolutely ridiculous. They were like two to three levels up on, on people, you know, fairly early in the game. It was just completely stupid, and that's why it was removed. Uh, definitely S tier, broke the game. We have Guardian's Blessing. Uh, this one was strong. I arguably could be S tier, to be completely honest, but I'll drop it in an A for now around these other ones. I do think it was a bit stronger than Assassin's Blessing, though, so if I was going to place it, I'd probably place it like that. Like, Guardian's Blessing, in a way, did break the game, because it really, like, kind of started bleeding into Solo and other roles like that. Obviously, it was designed as the Guardian Blessing to keep them even in gold. Uh, throughout Smite's history, there have been items that allow supports to keep even in gold and XP, because obviously get, they get less for not last sitting. And Guardian's Blessing was basically that starter item at the time, before it was removed, and we have all the uh, new Guardian starter items now. And basically, once you got 50 assists and evolved the item, you got extra GP5, which is gold per 5 seconds. It works like health per 5 seconds, mana per 5 seconds, so you just regen more gold, basically. And so that was really strong, and you had, like, soul laners building it just to get that extra GP5 to get that little bit of extra farm, because all soul laners just, they, they thrive on farm. I know it, I am one. And then they would just come out swinging when they had, like, way more gold than everyone else, farm up their items and stuff like that. So in a way, it did break the game, but I don't think it deserves an S placement. It was nowhere near as strong as uh, 500 gold Boomba's mask or golden bow or the focus mechanic. Speaking of something that is, though, Haste and Fatalis definitely goes straight to S tier. This is another item that completely broke the game. Uh, once again, Hunter-related, like Golden Bow. If you make Hunters too OP and you give them loads of tools, the game's not very fun. I'm sure they've learned their lesson by now. This one was removed in Season 4, and basically, like Haste and Ring and like Haste and Katana right now, there's a reason Hunters can't buy those two items. You know, Haste and Katana's restricted to physical melees only, so Warriors and uh, Assassins. And then, obviously, Haste and Ring is limited to magical, so Hunters don't get the Fatalis effect, other than on, like, Atalanta's bow, which is, like, a more toned down version of Fatalis Effect. You don't just remove the movement penalty, you just move a bit faster. And yeah, they basically added 10 penetration to this item uh, without really nerfing it whatsoever when it was already a decent item. And so early game, you were building this because it had 10 flat pen and flat pen is very good early game. And basically that just snowballed into a meta where ADCs were running around the fight at light speed, just basically attacking everyone, critting them, using kins, whatever it was at the time. You know, Haze of Fatalis definitely broke the game, made the ADC role just like dominate everything. Uh, Hunter's Blessing, we'll put in A tier as well. It was one of the stronger blessings, you know, on par with, like, Assassin's Blessing, Attacker's Blessing, and Guardian's, in my opinion. Uh, 30 basic attack damage or 15 before you've evolved it is nothing to laugh at. Get plenty of MP5, just a solid starter item. No complaints with Hunter's Blessing, really. Uh, Bracer of Replenishment just goes straight to F tier. This might be the worst item on the entire list. I don't know why this even existed, to be completely honest. It was terrible. Granted, it was cheap. It was 1850 gold, so similar to, uh, the original Gauntlet of Thebes, it was, like, barely more expensive than a tier 2 item, so pretty strong, but the stats were 15 HP 5, 250 mana, and 9 MP5, and the passive was just more HP 5 and MP5 for all your allies. It was just not very good. You know, th these stats are all completely inconsequential, you know. Regen is nice, but, like, in a tier fight do you really care about having extra regen and 250 mana it doesn't do anything for you like this might be one of the worst items smite has ever added in my opinion regen is is significantly overrated you don't need an entire item just to give you regen uh, we have original Lonos Mask. So basically, similar to Boomba's Mask, Lonos cost 500 gold as well, and you would buy it alongside your starter item. And this one, I don't know whether it deserves S or A. Probably A. It, it didn't break the game, but it was very strong. You know, it might be like a high A, something like that. Basically, with Lonos Mask, you have to stack it up, I believe, 75 times with uh, 75 minion assists or kills, I believe. Or they might have to be assists, actually, since it was a support item. And when you reach those 75 stacks, you got a massive, like, 400 gold, just like cash infusion. You know, 400 gold immediately right there. You could, like, buy an or whatever which was really strong you know it helps supports keep leveling gold it actually made supports sometimes ahead of a lot of people in gold you know you had supports being ahead of mids and stuff because they were splitting farm with the jungler and the support like hit that 400 gold bonus spiked up to like the top of the gold leaderboard for a little bit so it was a pretty interesting way to like keep supports even and definitely a very strong way but um when they removed the like 500 gold mask mechanic with boombas and lordos uh, they both went midas boots speaking of uh gold fixing for supports midas boots were the way they did it for a while 
Uh, I would put these in like A tier just because you can never underestimate gold generation. You know, anything that has gold generation can theoretically break the game. Like with Sol is using Guardian's Blessing, people will find a way to exploit gold generation because it's incredibly powerful. It's a ridiculous mechanic. Uh, my disputes back in the day were basically just uh, boots with gold per five on them. So you get more gold per five seconds, more gold regen, whatever. Uh, here we go. So we have um, Opal Acorn which was Ratatos, one of Ratatos' original four acorns before I got the new ones now. This one was obviously S tier. This one broke the game. This was the main reason release Rat was like a, a top five, arguably a top three god release of all time in terms of power level. Uh, basically, Opal Acorn, or I'll explain Rat's Dash first because it makes more sense to do it that way. Uh, Rat's Dash, back before it got reworked, if you dash through an enemy, an enemy god that is, it would refund the cooldown of the dash, uh, but you can only do that once per enemy. So in theory, you could dash through each enemy of the enemy team five times and get six dashes. The initial one plus one on the end for dashing through the final guy. And so in theory, you could get up to six dashes from one cast in a team fight with Rat. And here's the kicker, Opal Acorn added lightning bolts to the side of the dash, which significantly widened the hit area and the lightning bolt area of the hits applied on hit item effects. So you had things like Frostbound Hammer, you had Golden Bow that was still around at the time, I believe. You could crit on it and things like that. Uh, it, it was just absolutely ridiculous. And Rat was just darting around the fight, critting people with Lightning Bolt Opal uh, shots. You know, Golden Ball applying AoE damage to everyone. Frostbound Hammer slowing them all from the Golden Ball procs. You know, it, it was just, it was completely stupid. Arguably, this should potentially be above these. Uh, this one, it might look the same, but it's not. This is Rat's, you know, single Acorn that he had in, like, the intermediary rework. Because Rat originally had four Acorns. He was reworked to just have one to make him a little bit easier to balance. And then they reworked him again more recently to where he has four Acorns again. This was that single acorn that you had. Uh, this one was fine. I mean, it, I wouldn't say it broke Rat, honestly. It was just a little bit stronger than Boots. You know, it was a nice little character trait that he has. I, I wouldn't say it was any stronger than Emerald Acorn, to be completely honest. Uh, Sapphire Acorn, probably about the same as, as these ones. Maybe you could argue it should be C, but I think it's just a little bit below these. Basically, Sapphire Acorn was like the Sticky Bomb Effect one, where you're three, when you threw out the acorns, basically they would stick to people and they explode again for additional damage. You basically just increase the damage of your three. And we may as well place the final Rat Acorn here, so Topaz. This one was bad. I might put it in like D tier or C tier, but I did really like this item. Basically, uh, I explained how Rat's Dash works. If you dash through the same person twice, which will end your dash cooldown, by the way, you stun them for two seconds. And so it was funny with like support Rat. I tried support Rat back in the day with uh, like two seconds stun just immediately on demand super early in the game. You can get some early kills and snowball but it ultimately wasn't really that good of an acorn it was by far the worst one uh we have shaman's ring which is passive basically got stolen and put on spear of the magus but i thought i'd include it in the video anyway it was okay it was a pretty niche item basically you you apply like damage to people and then they uh have like a mark where they take additional damage it's basically a worse version of spear of the magus's current passive because they stole it from shaman's ring soul stone is an old starter so we won't include that one i'm not sure why i put that in like the file dump for this one uh, specialist blessing is like f tier as well probably you could argue it's d but it's probably F. Uh, similar to Defender's Blessing, it just took way too long to level up and the, the benefits were not that great. And it was only available in non-conquest mode, so less people picked it up in general. Uh, Gem of Gaia, also F tier. Um, Gem of Gaia is basically the mana equivalent of Stone of Gaia that we used to have, and there was a reason it was removed. It was terrible. Uh, you generally don't need an entire item that's just dedicated to regening your mana in Smite. It's not that important to regen mana. You know, the only role where, like, proper mana sustaining really matters is solo, and you have a blue buff and a totem of coup for that. So, uh, Gem of Gaia just became ultimately pretty pointless. Obviously, there wasn't a totem of coup back in the day, but there probably was a blue buff when Gem of Gaia was removed. Uh, this next one's pretty interesting, Heaven's Will. We'll put this in D tier, but basically, it's very hard to rank. You probably heard me mention earlier in the video that all basic attacks deal dealt physical damage back in the beta, and you had uh, magical abilities or physical abilities based on your class. So, you know, like, warriors would have physical abilities, mages would have magical, but all basic attacks did physical damage and scaled with physical power. I'm not entirely sure why it worked this way. It's probably a good idea that they changed it, but Heaven's Will is basically a remnant from that era. It has 30 physical power, 60 magical power, 15% physical lifesteal, and 25% magical lifesteal. It's basically just got power and lifesteal of both stat types. So on gods like Freya or Ymir that might want to build a little bit of physical power, uh, physical lifesteal to make their basic attacks hit harder. Uh, but they can also have some magical power, for example, for Freya's pulse and irradiate to hit harder. So you have a little bit of both to, you know, amp up both your abilities and your basic attacks. Also, the cost was 3,300 gold for absolutely dismal stats. So you could argue this should be F tier. I'm going to move it down there. It was 3,300 gold, more expensive than Bloodforge, more expensive than Heartseeker, and the stats were not comparable. Uh, Ascendance, this is, I don't really know why I put this in, but I thought it was funny. Basically, they just renamed Ascendance to Transcendence. I'm not sure why, but the item was basically the same, so I'll put it in like a B tier, I guess. Transcendence is fine. Focused Void Blade, should this be S tier? 
Probably not. I'll drop it in A for now, but Focus Void Blade was an incredibly strong item back in the day. Basically, it's the predecessor to Void Shield, so it gave power, protection, uh, both of physical and then like an aura of uh, penetration. Back in the day, he gave 25 physical penetration, which is absolutely insane. Nothing in the game, no item gives 25 physical penetration anymore. I don't even think anything gives 25 magical penetration, which is slightly easier to come by, but 25 penetration is just nuts. You know, most gods, like most squishies, have about 30 to 50 physical protections, like depending on the game time. So early in the game, if you get this, you're basically dealing true damage to people. And even later in the game, you know, you're halving their protections just by having this focus volley blade. And the stats on it weren't even that terrible either. You know, this one was just insanely strong. They obviously nerfed it when it became Void Shield and it went down to like, what was it, 15 or 10, like, uh, protection reduction instead of 25 pen that it had now. And then eventually they obviously reworked Void Shield to be percent based, so it's not like super insane to go early like, like Focus Void Blade was. This one was definitely strong, you know, arguably could have been S, but I wouldn't say it broke the game. It's just 25 pen on one item is stupid and it should never be a thing again. Next up we have Wall of Absolution. This one's similar to, I believe it's like, what is it, Jade Emperor's Crown or Lotus Crown? No, Lotus Crown's the healing one. I always get confused with these, like the whole crown tree. I think it's either Lotus Crown or Dynasty Play Helm. I think it's Dynasty Play Helm actually, because I'm pretty sure Lotus Crown's the healing one. So basically, Wall of Absolution was similar to Dynas Dynasty Play Helm. Uh, it had protections, power, a little bit of mana regen. And then when hit by a basic attack, your physical protection increases by 15 for 5 seconds with a max of 3 stacks. So basically, with full stacks, this item gave 105 physical protection, which I believe is the highest physical protection item we've ever seen, if I'm not wrong. Obviously, there's items like Mantle of Discord that have 120 total protections, but uh, in terms of just physical, I believe that's the highest we've seen. And so it wasn't terrible, but ultimately it was a very specific application. You know, you have to be hit by basic attacks to get that, like, 105 protections, otherwise it's just 60. So you're really just looking at dealing with Hunters here, and you are probably better off going other options like Frostman, Hammer, Wishblade, that kind of stuff. So ultimately, I'll put it in C tier because it wasn't terrible. It had a niche application, but it wasn't great. Warrior's Blessing's an interesting one because it was probably the most volatile blessing. You know, there were times in Warrior's Blessing's life where it was dominating the meta and if you didn't buy it in solo, you were trolling. And then there were also times in its life where if you did buy it in solo, you were trolling and it was terrible and you were going like tier two items instead or like tier two Rangers and stuff like that. Um, Warrior's Blessing's a very, I guess I'll put it in B because like sometimes it was A, arguably even S, sometimes it was D, arguably even F. So we'll put it in B for now. And that should be the end of the tier list. This is a duplicate and this I didn't mean to put in, so sorry about those two. That should be the full tier list for you. Let me give it a zoom in if I can. And yeah, if you've been playing Smite for a long time and you played with any of these items, you know, maybe even just as far back as like Season 4 with Haste of Vitalis or whatever, then do let me know and, and leave your comments down below on what you thought of some of these items. Obviously, a community input is going to be better. We're going to get a generally better conclusion about it because some of these I didn't even play with, you know, especially if you played in 2012 and you played with some of these super old items, definitely let me know down in the comments. And if you have any ideas for tier list videos, leave those down there too, but I'll catch you guys later. Have a great day and peace out, you know.